This is KGW News at 11. A young woman who authorities think is about 17 years old is hurt tonight after a shooting in North Portland. She has since been taken to the hospital. We aren't sure how she's currently doing. Here's the scene along North Greeley Avenue near Ainsworth Street. Authorities found the victim there at about 8 p.m. However, they think the shooting happened somewhere else. Now, this is the third shooting involving teenagers since last Monday in the city. So far, there have been no arrests in any of these shootings. Welcome to KGW News at 11. I'm Christelle Kumwe. Opponents of Measure 114 have filed a federal lawsuit urging a judge to block the recently passed gun law. The plaintiffs hope a judge will declare it unconstitutional and on the other hand, supporters believe it will be upheld and move quickly through the courts. As Alma McCarty found out, this is the first challenge of its kind in Oregon. Since Election Day, gun sales in Oregon have soared and sheriffs in some communities have voiced opposition to Measure 114, which narrowly passed with nearly 51 percent of the vote. The new gun law requires a five-year permit, firearms training, and a federal background check to purchase a gun. It also bans the sale of magazines holding more than 10 rounds of ammunition. This is about public safety safe schools, safe communities, and it's been proven to save lives. Now, Measure 114 faces another hurdle. Late Friday, the Oregon Firearm Federation, the Sherman County Sheriff, and a Marion County gun store owner filed a lawsuit against Governor Kate Brown and the state's attorney general, specifically taking issue with the magazine ban. In the suit, they claim millions of law-abiding Americans own firearms equipped with this technology, calling them standard-issue magazines, not large capacity. Plaintiffs say the ban violates their Second Amendment rights and the right to due process. The lawyer representing the gun rights group writes, banning magazines over 10 rounds is no more likely to reduce criminal abuse of guns than banning high-horsepower engines is likely to reduce criminal abuse of automobiles, and that the only thing the ban contained in 114 ensures is that a criminal unlawfully carrying a firearm with a magazine over 10 rounds will have a potentially devastating advantage over his law-abiding victim. But Reverend Dr. Mark Knutson with Lift Every Voice Oregon, the group behind the ballot measure, disputes the assertion that 114 infringes on the constitutional rights of Oregonians. Those who already have them, it's, it already says that they would keep them. Uh, they could use them on their property or at shooting ranges. So nobody's taking away anybody's guns or, or their uh, magazines. He said in drafting the measure, the Interfaith Coalition worked with gun owners, hunters, and law enforcement to make the law equitable, reasonable, and just. 51% may have passed this, but I could see 70% in a year and a half saying this makes all the sense in the world and that number will grow over time because we will see a real difference. A group called Oregon Moms for Addiction Recovery lined up for a rally along 82nd and Gleason in Portland today. The group does this every month to raise awareness about Oregon's addiction crisis. Many of the people here are parents who lost children because of addiction. You know, we got to do this for our kids. You know, this is Oregon Moms uh, for Addiction Recovery. And I got my kid out here, you know, and, and if my kid has a substance use disorder, I don't want her waiting to get into treatment. We need to have on-demand de on treatment for our kids. We're losing too many kids to fentanyl uh, right now, so that, that's the point we're trying to get across. We've got to do it for our kids. Oregon Moms for Addiction Recovery says we can end the crisis by educating communities and policymakers, along with supporting families and their loved ones who suffer from addiction. There is some promising news in the fight against cancer, and it comes from Oregon State University. Scientists there have taken nanotechnology to a new level by targeting cancer cells. Tim Gordon explains. This is stuff that's hard for a lot of us to comprehend, so let's start with the basics. Nanoparticles are extremely small on a near atomic scale and undetectable to the human eye. But these particles can do some powerful things. Magnetic nanoparticles have already been used to fight cancer by being injected directly into cancerous tissues. When exposed to an alternating magnetic field, the particles heat up and kill cancer cells. 
Now nanoscientists at Oregon State University have developed a particle potentially capable of being introduced intravenously into the human body. From there, they can find the cancer and attack it. So technically, by using these nanoparticles, we hit the cancer tumor from inside, not from outside. Ole Taratula is one of the lead scientists. So far, they've found success in laboratory trials on mice with ovarian cancer. Their work showed the particles found the hard-to-reach cancer cells. And the heat created by their nanoparticles gets hotter, so it was more effective than any others before. We developed the new nanoparticles, which have very high heating efficiency. And these nanoparticles, they could be injected systemically. And during a certain period of time, let's say 24 hours, they can go to the cancer tissue. While this type of treatment is years away from helping human cancer patients, it is a promising breakthrough. Tim Gordon, KGW News. Oh, yeah. We have some breaking news tonight. We are seeing at least a dozen police cars lined up near the embassy suites near PDX. We've also received reports of a shooting in the area. Art Edwards is at the scene now, and Art, what can you tell us? Uh, police have now confirmed that there has been a shooting here at the Embassy Suites. Uh, we are right here out at the airport, our air, air cargo way, uh, and about 81st is where this is happening. I'm going to move out of the way. There is uh, uh, There are still a number of police cars here on the scene. What they've been able to tell us is very limited so far. They say... Scene. Now, the Port of Portland Police and Portland Police Bureau, they were the ones who responded initially to this. The Port of Portland Police, along with the East County Major Crime Team, are going to be the ones who are going to be working on this ongoing investigation. Uh, there are still cars in the parking lot. It looks like there are still people who are staying at the hotel at the uh, embassy suites here out by the airport. A shooting a little bit earlier in the evening. One person, they say, is the victim in this, although they did not say the kind of condition. And one to three people left the scene. They are people that they are looking Looking for in connection with what happened out here. Back to you. Thanks, Art. We'll continue to follow this story. Tualatin Valley Fire and Rescue put out this brush fire earlier today along Southwest Beef Bend Road. Initial reports of the fire came in shortly after 10 a.m. The fire started after leaves from a burn pile got picked up by the wind. Those leaves ended up sparkling, sparking in a nearby field. All of this while Washington County has enacted a burn ban. Officials say the burn ban was reenacted due to brush fires over the past couple of days that originated from outdoor burning. This impacts Clackamas, Yemhill, and Multnomah counties. The ban will remain in place until weather patterns change due to increased wildfire risk. All right, meteorologist Joe Ranier is uh, joining us now and Joe we are seeing what is the weather pattern we're seeing right now basically more the same a strong ridge of high pressure mm -hmm. although there's a weak disturbance that's going to kind of brush on by throughout tomorrow but we're not going to be seeing anything really changed that you're going to be noticing you will notice the winds dying down tonight and into tomorrow but in terms of um, real changes in our weather pattern that's not going to be arriving until late Monday night into Tuesday when that does we'll be seeing our first round of showers that we basically haven't seen in about two weeks. But tonight we're looking at below freezing temperatures by tomorrow morning. You'll be waking up to not only sub freezing temperatures right around the mid to the upper 20s in a few locations, but some areas of widespread frost throughout much of the metro area. As we look at these temperatures right now, look at Timber Junction along Highway 26 on your way out to the coast. Temperature right now of 22 degrees, 24 in Hillsborough. Now, the farther you get away from the city, your temperatures are going to be dropping pretty quick. That's the case over in parts of rural Washington County at this hour. East side of the state, single digits over in Burns. You can see that ridge of high pressure has been bringing us a lot of sunshine, but uh, not much in terms of cloud cover. And that's why we're going to be seeing another round of very cold temperatures, at least for another morning. Uh, temperatures right now are 37 degrees at the Portland International Airport with clear skies. We're not going to be seeing much in terms of cloud cover here the next couple of days. But as we look at the temperatures overnight, you can see by 6 o'clock tomorrow morning, places like Eugene, you're going to be seeing temperatures in the low 20s. Uh, Corvallis, a little bit warmer at 31. And in Salem, you're seeing temperatures in the mid to the upper 20s. And we'll gradually warm up heading into tomorrow. But we still have this air stagnation advisory through parts of the valley. That's the case throughout parts of Lynn and Lane County. And you travel east side over to uh, Bend and Redmond over in the high desert. You're still going to be under that air stagnation advisory.
advisory over the next couple of days. We really need some changes in our weather pattern to clear some of that poor air. Again, that's not going to be happening for another couple of days. I'll talk more about that in detail and how much rain we could be seeing come Tuesday in just about 10 minutes from now.